Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy Wayne and today I want to walk you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 for beginners. And I'm going to start with showing you how to pair this with your phone. And I'm going to show you how to pair with any phone, not just a Samsung phone, because one of the benefits of this uh, smartwatch slash fitness tracker is that you can use it with any Android phone. Okay. So all you have to do is on your phone, you're going to go to the Play Store app and you're simply going to do a search. Just type in wearable app Samsung or Galaxy wearable. Um, either one is fine. This is the app that will come up and this is the app you'll need to download and this will allow you to sync your uh, Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 with uh, any Android phone. Okay. It's not a large app and it should download fairly quickly. Now while this is downloading, um, I want to show you guys the charger. Now for some of you, when you first get it out of the box, it's going to be off. And to turn it on, you'll simply just need to connect the charger. So this is the port. It has two just little uh, magnetic uh, dots here. And you'll see the two magnetic dots on the back of your device right there. And you'll just connect just like this. And uh, once you connect this to the watch and to power, um, the screen is going to turn right on. So um, super easy there. Um, that's how you get it to turn on the first time. Um, pressing the button may also work too. Um, sometimes it is not charged out of the box, so that's just what you'll want to do. Okay, so our app is downloaded. So now on the phone, I'm going to tap on the open button to open up the app. And we're going to hit start. Hit allow. And that's telling the phone that it can look for the signal that is going to be sent from your, uh, your watch here for it to pair. And so it already found it super fast available devices. We'll tap on the device. You will see a number pop up on your screen and you'll want to make sure those numbers match, which they almost always do unless you're in an area where there are multiple smartwatches. And in that case, you need to make sure you verify those numbers. Um, so now we'll just give them a second. Now they're in the process of just syncing. There we go. Okay, so you're going to see a pop up on your screen. You're going to tap pair and connect and then pair. And this is basically uh, them connecting via Bluetooth first. We're going to tap OK. It's going to install uh, uh, an additional app, a plugin on the phone, which will allow them just to stay synced. And again, that download should happen pretty quickly. OK, so our plugin is now installed. We're going to hit the home button and we want to go up to our Galaxy wearable app. And there's one more thing we'll need to download, which is the Samsung accessory service. So let's install that too. All right, that was quick home button. And now we'll go back to our galaxy wearable app. Okay. So next we will need to set up a Samsung uh, account. If you don't already have one, it's a free account and it's just a way to manage all of the data that is collected with your watch and it helps with syncing the watch back and forth to the phone. One of the easiest ways to do this is simply tap on sign in with Google and it will link it with whatever your Gmail account is. So I'm going to tap on my account, put in my password and then it will sync. So after it connects, it will ask you just to give Google permission, Google and um, Samsung, and um, you'll have a few more terms and conditions. One thing I want you to, to just pay attention to here is there are certain things that you have to check and then there's things that are optional. I never check the options that are optional. I only check what I have to check and then um, hit agree. Hit continue. Our account is now created. And so it's going to sync one more time. So I'll tap on again my Fit 3, hit continue, and this is just linking our uh, watch with our um, Samsung account, and then we should be into our interface. Okay, we'll hit continue, hit allow. 
Okay, so for this, we'll need to go to settings and we'll need to go to permissions and we'll need to enable location um, always on. And what this allows you to do is for the, the watch to then be able to track your workouts and give you better accuracy um, with your steps. Let's hit allow for the plugins that we just downloaded. Um, you don't need to necessarily allow all of these, so it just depends. Um, like if you wanna be able to view your text messages on it, you have to give it permission for that. And we're just about at the end of the setup process. Now you, uh, I would encourage you to turn on the auto backup. So that way it will sync, like if you download a new watch face, um, anything like that, it will all automatically sync with your Samsung account. Um, select which wrist that you're gonna use your watch with. I always use mine with my right wrist. Um, and let's see, there we go. It's gonna send us some daily alerts that are gonna help us track how active we are. And the way it tracks it is with these three uh, hearts. And at this point, we are at the end of the setup process. This is the last bit of syncing that is gonna happen. And uh, you'll notice that now, if we look at our band here, we can see take a tour. And here, oh, sorry, there's one last thing. There's a pop-up you'll see that will say, allow Galaxy wearable to uh, read your notifications. Um, so we hit allow there, tap on the plugin. Press allow, allow. There we go. Now I wanna pause uh, the app for a minute here and I wanna just walk through how to use the interface. The interface is very easy, which I love. I've actually been using this for uh, probably over a month now and I really love it. It's a very minimalistic design and there's not a lot that um, you need to know, but. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of just how you navigate the device, okay? So let's skip this. This is your home screen. You will have a button on the right side. And if you ever swipe away from the main screen, just tapping this button will take you right back to your home screen. This will also wake up your watch as well. And one cool tip is that when you double tap on the power button, you can program it to launch a specific app. So. Um, watch this tap it twice and uh, right now it's set to take you to your frequent um, uh, workouts so if you just need to maybe you run a lot and you want to be able to just get right to your screen to, to track your workout double tapping this will take you to the workout section you can pick the workout you're doing and it'll start tracking it now um, a little bit later I'll show you how to change that you can program that to launch whatever app you want it to launch. So um, anyway, we'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. But um, so let's just start with just basically how to navigate, how to move around. So swiping left will take you through your different tiles. And so there's um, quite a few different tiles in here. So and when we get to the end, it'll stop. And then you just swipe back. It doesn't um, rotate through, which kind of sucks. Um, so swiping left, first tile is tracking your uh, activity for the day, um, steps, how, how often you were active and how many calories you burnt. These are your um, different workouts. This is tracking your sleep. Uh, if you wear it at night, um, you can add it to give you information about the weather and your location. Um, you have a little calendar you can have access to when you play music or when you listen to a YouTube video When you do anything on your phone that has has audio related to it. You can control it from your watch. You can actually pause it um, Skip forward skip backward all from your watch, which is pretty cool um, You can track your heart rate Track your cycling and if you hit the plus here you can add a few other different tiles So maybe an alarm or a timer those are just a couple of the options now, when you swipe down from the top of the screen, this is how you access um, the uh, quick quick settings menu. And these are just, uh, again, shortcuts to things you would use the most. So uh, for example, um, the sleep tracking, the power off, the do not disturb. Um, if you wanna get to your settings, you tap on that settings wheel right there. 
Now, if you swipe down and swipe left, you have more options. So you have a flashlight. You can turn your screen into a flashlight. You can control the volume by just swiping up or swiping down. See that? So that's kind of a, you know, a, a, a fun feature. You know, can't find your phone, but you know, you're in the dark. You can use your watch as a flashlight. Um, your screen brightness is here. You have a cinema mode for when you're in a movie theater and you don't want your watch to be too bright. Cinema mode will dim down your screen um, so that it's not too bright. You have airplane mode. And then one of the features I use uh, very frequent, which is the uh, water lock feature. Now water lock is like uh, if you're in the shower or you're going swimming, um, the touch screen would normally go bananas because the, the water is constantly impacting the touch sensor on your watch, but when you turn that on, it basically disables the touch screen so that you don't have to worry about it, it like changing your settings or just doing all kind of crazy stuff. This is also a great feature if your kids tend to touch your smartwatch a lot and you're, you don't want them to touch it, you can enable the water lock and then they can touch the screen but it won't do anything. So anyway, to turn it off, you simply hold down on the power button for two seconds like this, one and two and it turns off and then now your touch screen is back to normal. Swiping down and left, um, that's pretty much it in terms of those features there. Now, home screen, if you swipe up, you have a different menu. This is showing you all the different apps that are available on the phone and you can swipe through and you have a settings option right here as well. Cool little calculator. I didn't use this too much, but I love that they have this one here. Now, for these pages, you might swipe through and say like, I don't care about the weather. I don't want that to be one of the screens. Hold down on that screen and you can hit this red minus to remove that page. And this will allow you to go through and say, no, I don't really want that as an option. I only want these certain things. You hit the minus and it's gone. So that's an easy way to just kind of filter through and uh, simplify uh, the screen. Now, when you're on the main screen, if you want to change the, the watch face, you simply hold down on the screen for one second and then you can swipe through some pre-selected uh, tiles that are going to be on the watch. Now you can add more on the phone and I'll get, that's the next thing I'm going to go over, but these are just a couple of the options that are already there. That's a pretty cool one right there. And then with um, this option here, this will allow you to add your own picture to be the background and you would then customize it using the app. So that's really all the watch does. I mean, it is, it's a very bare bones design. It's meant to be more of a fitness tracker to more of compete with like your Fitbit, like charge. So uh, I love it in that regard because it's just so simple and there's not a lot that you need to, to do. Um, so anyway, let's switch over now to the phone here. I'll keep it close. And let's look into the app and kind of learn what you can do within the app. So the, the main thing that you'll use the app for and the main thing that I always use the app for was the watch faces. Now here is where you can manage the watches, the watch faces that are currently on the device because it'll allow you to have up to 10 watch faces that are saved on the device. So even if you're not next to your phone, you can always change them as long as it's in those 10. So if we hit manage, Here's where you'll find those 10 and specifically the one I mentioned that allows you to change the picture to what, to whatever you want your background to be. Um, it's this option here. If you tap on the pencil, it'll allow you to then go to your gallery and then you can select a picture that is saved on your phone and then make that picture the background picture. So that's pretty cool. Now, Maybe you say, I want more options. I like these, but I want to see what else they have. No problem. We'll hit the back button. And in this list, you're going to find uh, a lot of watch face options. I think there's hundreds in here. And this is one of the things I was really pleased with in using this device is that there's so many uh, unique watch faces that are available. And um, you just tap it and you just add it. So for example, maybe you like this one right here. You tap on it, hit add and then you'll tap add it, uh, allow and install. And it's gonna simply download that watch face and it'll add it as one of your favorites. So it's really quick. You don't have to leave the app to find the other uh, watch faces. It's all just there. So just one of the you know best uh, 
I think one of the best features of this is just, it's just a closed loop system. It's very simple. Okay, so that watch face was downloaded and now it is the new watch face for the watch. So super easy there. So remember you can only have 10. If you ever try to download more than 10, it will stop you and it'll say, sorry, you need to remove one. So just keep that in mind. Now, uh, as you scroll through this list, you'll find so many cool options for watch faces and um, you just simply start adding them. This was one that I had on, uh, on my personal watch. And I feel like they've been, they've been adding more since I purchased it, which is really great. So um, there's just so many in here. This one is like the uh, original one. You get the stock wa uh, watch face. And so don't be afraid of like deleting one on your main screen. Uh, like, Cause again, you can only have 10. So if you delete one, you can just find it and just re-add it. And um, as you sw slide over, like there's not like more when you slide over, it's just those four. So it makes it really easy for you to just swipe through and just see all that is available. Anyway, just know that when you get to 10, um, it's not gonna let you get any more. So what you'll need to do is just swipe back up to the top and you'll see how many pages this is. And you'll hit manage. Once you get to 10, you'll just delete one. So like, let's say we delete this one, we'll tap on the X in the upper right corner and that will remove that one and give you space for another watch. So anyway, that's how you uh, just change watch faces, add watch faces. Now, um, there's not a ton else to do really, because again, understand this is meant to be more of a fitness tracker, not a smart watch. So there's not a ton of other built-in features, but I just wanna walk you through each menu. So if we go to the app screen, it will allow you to change the order of the apps. Maybe you tend to use your calculator more. You can hold down the arrows to the right and just move it up. And maybe you say, oh, I, I use my timer a lot, which I actually use my timer. That was one of the apps I used the most. So I want that one to be prioritized. So now when you swipe up from the home screen, the order of the apps would be different. So there's that. Um, next is the tiles and you can change the order of the tiles. You can also see what other tiles are available that maybe are not currently on the screen. So again, you can change the order, hold down and just drag to the left. And this is how you reorder the tiles. You can also delete tiles from here. Maybe you don't want this media controller, hit the minus, remove it, and then go through and say, hey, you know, I, I love if I could have this monthly calendar, that's great. Let's add that. And when I swipe left, I wanna see my calendar first, no problem. Uh, put your finger on it, hold, and just drag it over. And that's how you change the order of the tiles that you'll see when you swipe. We'll save that. Next, we have our quick panel. You can change the order of the apps that you see when you swipe down from the top of the screen. And some of you might say, uh, okay, I don't, I don't want uh, this, you know, I don't want the airplane mode or I don't want the find my phone, whatever. So no problem. You can hit the minus and remove it and it's gone. Um, so holding down on one of these will allow you to move it over and just change the order. Um, and that's it. There's a few things that uh, I still want to hit that are really important. Okay, so one is when you go to band settings and you go to advanced features, this is where you can change what double tapping the uh, power button is gonna do. So if I tap on double press, I can change this to something else. So um, on my watch, I had the timer set as the double press because, you know, uh, on, on a very practical note, you know, I you know do laundry at home, right? So I would double tap that and it was really easy for me to set an, you know, a one hour timer for my washer, you know? So that's why I liked the, the double tap going to a timer, but whatever fits your situation, like that's what you, you know, set it to what is gonna work best for you. Um, so next, and I kind of glossed over this, two more really important things. So let's get back to our watch here. If you swipe down and swipe to your left and you tap on this, this is the find my phone feature. And with this, if your phone is lost and you're within Bluetooth range, maybe your phone is like, you know, it slipped between the couch or something, or your kid is using it in the other room, you can't find it. Swipe down, swipe left, tap on find my phone. 
it's gonna send a ping to your phone and it'll make noise. So that's a really easy way to, you know, find your phone. Super useful. Now next, swipe down, swipe left, or excuse me, swipe down. This is your always on switch. What is the always on switch? Well, right now when my screen goes dim, the screen just looks dark. But if you turn this on and my screen goes dim, watch it. It's going to go dim in a couple of seconds. You're going to see what is called my always on clock. And the always on clock essentially is going to show you the time um, even when you're not using the screen. Okay, I had to make one small switch, which is that um, the watch is smart enough to know when it is on your wrist and it's not. So when the watch is not on your wrist, the always on clock, even though it was enabled, it will not show. So I had to put it on my wrist and you can see very faintly the clock is showing up in the left corner, even though the screen is off. This is called the always on clock and this will always stay on because it's the always on clock, right? Um, so. Um, every watch face that you download has an always on clock. And if this feature is enabled, when the screen turns off, it will show the always on clock. Now, one important disclaimer with the always on clock is that it is going to drain your battery faster. I personally kept this feature on the entire time that I used it because I love to always be able to see the time. And so I was okay with charging. I think I probably could have gotten an extra day or day and a half of battery life, but I was okay with charging my watch every other day or every two days because I just like to be able to glance over at my watch and see the time and not have to flick my wrist. So that was my personal preference. You find what works best for you and you do that, okay? Now, the last thing I wanna show you, and then you know what, we're gonna wrap up because we've covered just about everything we want to cover in this video. Um, I want to show you, this is not a, not a secret menu, but it really is like, if you don't know it's there, you'll miss it. So if you uh, swipe down from the top of the screen and you long press on the clock right here, the second, you know, so second you know, option, you guys see it, it's right here. If you long press it, it's going to bring up this menu, which is going to give you uh, a few options. This is really a shortcut to something you would find in the regular menu, but this is a quick way to get to it. So always on clock, this, your, your raise, your, your raise wrist to wake. This is how you enable, turn it on and off. You can turn on touch screen to wake. So that way just simply tapping the screen will wake up your watch. You can also, you know, decide, do you want to show your media controls when you have audio playing? Um, you can toggle that here. You can also change your screen timeout time. So how long do you want your screen to be on before it goes dim? And these are the options here up to 30 seconds. Now notice when I swipe from the left side to the middle of the screen, that's how you go back one step in the menu. So again, I'm just swiping from this left side to the middle and that's how we go back one step. Now uh, show last app. You can change that as well. Um, show charging info. So this will, um, you know, show battery level information as well. So this is just a, a good a good menu to know about because these are really important options. You can also tap on the brightness and quickly control how bright or how dim the screen is as well. So remember, left side swipe to the middle to get out of that. Left side swipe to the middle to get out of that. Same thing. Now let's go over what happens when text messages come through. I want to show you exactly what they look like and how you can interact with them. Normally a little red dot will show up on the left side of your screen here. Like I'm going to send myself a text message right now so you can see what that looks like. And then when you see that red dot, it means you have a new message that's come through and you can swipe uh, right to get to it. So watch this. Just sent myself a text. Give it a few seconds, you should see a little red dot pop up on the left side of the screen here. Okay, and here it is. You see the little red dot right here. Now when I swipe to the right, um, this will show me all the messages that have come through. So this is a text message right here. If I tap on that message, I can read the entire message, which I said, hey, 
and that's another message right there. Now if I tap on the text message, I can read the full message. I can reply. And these are the list of options you'll have. And I believe you can update these if you're in the app. Yeah, right here it says manage on phone. So if you tap manage on phone, it will uh, take you into the phone and into the messaging app where you can reply or you can simply select one of these options here. You just hit later and it's gonna just send that reply. So that's one easy way to respond to messages. And then I'm gonna swipe from the, again, the side to the middle. And then you can see I have uh, my health app. Uh, let me know that I've hit my target for the day. This is a, a notification from Uber Eats. Now this is a message from Outlook. Now when I tap on this, it doesn't actually show me the content because it's hidden. So I'd have to tap show on phone. So only certain, um, really only text messages are going to show the full message on here. And other apps will just tell you, oh, you have a new notification. And when you tap it, it'll pop up on your phone and let you interact with that message. So just keep that in mind. That's one of the things that, you know, I wish it gave a little bit more detail, but um, you know, it is what it is. Next, I wanna show you what happens when a call comes through on the phone. You can actually speak on the device, but you can decline the call from here. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to trigger a call to myself and we can see what the pop-up will look like. So a phone is ringing. We should see it on the screen shortly. There it is. So there's my incoming call. Now I can swipe up to basically send a text message. Hey, text later, call you later. Um, or I can basically drag this down to decline the call. Now you can only decline the call. You don't have an option to pick up the call because there is no speaker built into the Fit3 so you can't talk. So your two options are declining the call by just dragging down or um, to, to swipe up and that'll get you to the uh, pre-recorded text responses that you can have sent, letting them know, hey, I'll text you or call you later. So that's how you interact with calls. And this is it guys, this brings us to the end of our video. Um, my goal was to be thorough and just really give a full breakdown of how to use this smartwatch. Again, I've been using it for a month and I've had a really great experience with it. And so um, part of my role is, uh, you know, test out technology and then walk you through how to use it. So if you found value in this video, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, my humblest uh, thank you uh, and sincerest thank you. I appreciate you watching to the end. And I, again, hope you got a lot of value out of the video. If you can hit that like button so that YouTube will share the video out to more people that may have this watch and might need help, I'd appreciate that. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know um, what section of the video was the most helpful. I always love to hear your feedback. And if there's another video you'd like to see on this watch, uh, definitely drop it in the comment section down below and I'll try to make that video for you. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.